Okay, we're ready for part two. Uh, let's start with uh, something that was um, referred to already. Um, it's a um, evaluation project. Um, because we mentioned that we're going to do it. And um, we'll have to do it. tell us something about it. Yeah, I tried to. Uh, because uh, talking about quality in art uh, in my own language is hard enough. Uh, in a foreign language, it's almost suicide. So, uh, yeah, but I, I give it a try. And since I've been through it, uh, I, I should have been able to tell something about it. But uh, first, a few words. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a personal theoretic background, I'm a practitioner of theatre. I've been working as a dramaturg in the Norwegian theatre uh, for 20 years. Uh, I've been a journalist for 10 years. I've been a group player in the so-called free group for some years. And I've studied too many years. So, so uh, that's my background. Uh, sort of uh, a jack of all trade uh, in, in theatre. But uh, all the same, I don't think it's easy to sneak around a discussion about quality. Uh, I've just been in Rome for the first time in my life. And uh, one evening we went into a church called uh, Santa Maria uh, della Pace. Not because of, uh, I'm not uh, very religious, but there are very, some very nice paintings there on the walls. But uh, when we came there, there was a, there was a choir singing. It, it was a kind of uh, concert mass. And it is, I will say, uh, the, the worst choir I've ever heard. It was historically bad. <laughs> uh, but I think that we uh, were the only uh, ones there who would call, who would pay any notice to the bad singing. Uh, uh, I think for for the rest of the people to talk about quality of the choir would be the same thing as to talk about quality uh, walking around the Christmas tree. Uh, it, it was it was uh, a typical example of how important context is uh, when we talk about quality and how necessary it is to talk about quality, to talk about context and to talk about culture training understanding, learning, and so on. And I don't think it's possible to sneak around the, the discussion of quality. I think it's, you just have to, to, to find out how complex it is uh, to talk about quality. This said, I will go into what I should talk about. Um, um, yeah, I went also to the, to the opera. Just more and more of uh, been there, done that uh, visit to the opera. And it was a fantastic choir, and it bored me to sleep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. context again, and culture, and it was not my kind of expression. It was a very romantic, very, yeah, untheatrical opera uh, performance. But uh, I think the Italians loved it. So, again, I think. Uh, uh, I haven't seen the receptions. Uh, I think maybe it was priced as a very good, uh, good, good performance. Might, might have been. I don't know. For me, it wasn't. It was bad theatre. It was a very good choir. Uh, this, uh, this, um, this uh, evaluation was, uh, as you have said, uh, it was commissioned by the ministry. Uh, the ministry every year gets from, uh, uh, I mean, to a, a very typical text based theater uh, milieu. So, all of, most of the institutional theaters in Norway are. Uh, there are another theater scene uh, uh, um, uh, supported by the uh, Art Council, and that's a much bigger and much more varied theater uh, expression you find in. In that area, where, where many, of, most, or all of the free groups are, are um, have their 
the funding. But this is uh, an evaluation that was done uh, for the Ministry of the text-based institution theatres. Uh, and I would say that the first round that I took part in was a sort of pilot. Uh, it was based on the same uh, same system as uh, Julia was telling about, the, the Önsky Wissen model, the, uh, the, the, what was it called, it? divining rod. It looks like it's done by, uh, by some academics in Aarhus uh, University, Jörn Langstedt, Karin Hanna, or Charlotte Rödan Larsen. And this, uh, this divining rod looks like this. This is more the ecological uh, face of it. <laughs> uh, uh, with the three branches. Uh, will, or, or ID, or engagement, what you want to tell, uh, craftsmanship, ability, uh, professionalism, uh, and relevance. And you could make models or you could you could describe uh, uh, performances within this sort of model, let's say. And you could cut that one, the professional thing, and say, oh no, a very short arm for professional, very good, very strong will, and so on and so on. It's, it's, so it, it is a model, and I, I agree with Guri, it's a model that is uh, handy. Discussions. Yeah, for discussions. Hmm. It's not a. It's not the last word said about quality in no way, and and, and, and it's uh, it's a good sign for that. Is that when your uh, Langstead passed his 70 years, his colleagues uh, handed out a book, double as thick as this one, with critique of this model. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, it's. Uh, I, I now say some words about what we did. Um, we, uh, we did an evaluation of three of uh, the 14, 15 theatres in, in Norway within this institutional sphere. It was the, one of the smallest, so on a few hundred theatres on the west coast in the fjords. It was Ugran Theater in the oil city of Stavanger. And it was the National Theatre in Oslo. Three very different theatres, different size, different program, different muscles when it comes to economy, and so on and so on. And, and, uh, and when it comes to, to um, the possibility of get, getting the best actors, the best uh, directors, the best uh, choreographers, the best and so on and so on. Um, Three very different uh, sizes, different cities, different, um, yeah, uh, many things. Uh, the, this evaluation or this model, in a way, is also based on an assumption that there is common ground of sort of of a consensus uh, of what is good and what is bad. And I think it's very, it's very. We have to say that because it also supports uh, 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 an element in every quality discussion that there is culture, there is a culture-based, uh, uh, strong culture-based element in, in agreeing in what is uh, what is good or what is bad. Or else, I think a discussion of quality would be almost impossible. Uh, we. This uh, was done in, uh, uh, in four months. We started in January, uh, ended in May, and we should evaluate the last four years. Already here, you can hear, this is a very, very uh, dangerous undertaking. Uh, uh, it was also based on an assumption that uh, we should evaluate uh, not from having seen so many performances, uh, more based on critics uh, than on our own, uh, own um, uh, being there in, in, the, in, the, in the salon. And because two of us live in Oslo, uh, we have of course had seen many other productions on the National Theatre, very few in, on the fjords of the West Coast. 
a little a few a few more uh, insta -hunger. So it, it's a very very different um, ground of of uh, evaluating based on what we have seen ourselves. Uh, we have criticized that that um, that base basis for for the evaluation that was a part of our report that we have called quality for all the money. It's a Norwegian expression. I won't go into it. Uh, uh, but but um, uh, when we accepted to do it, it was because in Norway when theaters report. Of course, they report in, on quality in the way that there is a quality in numbers as well, as was said here. It's a quality in, uh, in diversity, it's a quality of how many forms do you do for children, how many do you reach all parts of society, and so on and so on. All these things are also qualities, but it's very, in the dialogue between the theatres and the ministry, it's very seldom to talk of how was the performance. Do you, do you think that you succeed in your work? Uh, yeah, there is no, that type of evaluation uh, is very seldom uh, on the table. And the, mean, and the, the, the aim of this evaluation was to go into that sort, that sort of discussion, to give the ministry an, a, another basis for talking to the theatres other than numbers, uh, the measurable. Uh, it started off with uh, 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 a paper that the theatres made themselves about the situation in the theatre. Questions that were uh, partly done by the ministry, partly by us, and partly by the organization of the theatres called NTO, uh, the Norwegian Theatre and Orchestra Organization. So it is a very sort of um, uh, I would say it, uh, it was it was a high confirmation of this of this paper of these questions. Uh, um, uh, that was handed back to us, and we developed also another paper with more more uh, more uh, thoroughly questions on artistic processes. What discussions are going on in the theatre? Who is taking part in discussions? Uh, we were trying to focus on how, what, what is the, art, how is the artistic uh, the discussion on the house? How does it affect the program? How does it affect uh, uh, the artistic director's choices? How do the dramaturgy art work, and so on and so on? So that was the that was the focus of the work we did outside these, uh, these questions. So it, it's based on two or three feet, the theatre's own evaluation of their work, uh, more fact-based um, part that the ministry did, and our, uh, our um, summing up the discussions and our impressions from different sources. So that's the three feet that this was based on. I think I'll stop there and just take the rest in question. But uh, I think I've given sort of an overview of how this was done. Thank you. Maybe just some questions. It's, it's on the net, so uh, it can be read there. I'm only in Norwegian, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just one practical question to that. Are there any um, consequences for, is there a follow up? Is there any consequences for these companies? I mean, you can say, yeah, we do for it or we do I don't hope, I don't hope so. Uh, well, no, not directly, I think. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, there were some reactions afterwards because we said something about uh, why don't, the National Theatre do more uh, diverse uh, productions of children's theatre uh, than they do when do they hammer these old Torben Egner shows every Christmas and so on. We had some critical discussions that made some effect in the, in the media. 
uh, and I saw that the director of the National Theatre said that they would now try to develop a new place. Uh, it would be very... I don't think it was because of us, but maybe we were pushing, pushing uh, a little. But I think maybe if I should be so bold as to say, if, when it comes to effects, maybe it could, could change the discussion or the dialogue between the ministry and the theatres, so that when they meet, uh, the theatres don't have to, to sit there and boast of how many seats were taken and how many of that and how many of that. More than what are you going to do? What do you like to do? What are your dreams? More uh, yeah. that kind of discussion or, or, or dialogue. And, and one of the main aims of this uh, model, says Jürgen, Lang um, Jürgen Langstedt, is to create a room for dialogue. That's some part of room. So, uh, and I think that's um, if we can only get there, we have achieved something. Um, was, was the audience involved in that inquiry as well? Or? No. no. Uh, and I think uh, the involvement uh, of uh, or who took part in the, the dialogue with us was too, too thin, too top heavy. The administrators, the artistic director, um, yeah. So we should have liked to talk to. Uh, Actors, to dramaturgs, to uh, and we should have liked it to go on for a much longer time. Uh, four months to evaluate four years is absurd, of course it is. Uh, but uh, then, then again, that reflects uh, the ministry's opinion that you could base such an evaluation on on secondhand uh, reports like critics and. Uh, Something yet, yeah, I think it's quite impossible. And I hope when they follow it up now, the second round is already started, that they give them other frames. Mm -hmm. mm. Is that kind of evaluation grade that exists within uh, Iceland as well? And if not, do you want it? Couldn't be for no more about that. Denmark, Denmark has, has done it in, in, in the Aarhus. Uh, yeah, and we have done it with some of the regional theatres. Okay. The same, but only with real regional theatres. Well, oh, that dialogue with uh, the Iceland in Iceland was just going through this creative industry report, mm -hmm. but he stopped there. Okay. <laughs> and uh, now we are so lucky as everybody else in Scandinavia to have the right wing politics. <laughs> so we are back to zero. Yeah, no, you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we've always had them, so we probably yeah know how to talk to them. But then we are back back to basic. Yes. You have to start over. It's almost it's almost the fancy talk about culture, I think, these days. Yeah. People work in culture, and they hate. they're trying to because of the crisis and because of the situation. It's been a, they're trying to separate things and go. Oh, we need a hospital, but we don't need culture because we don't afford it. But we need a hospital. They're really trying to separate. And we need roads, and not culture, and we need yeah. schools, but so, no culture. So they're always us. stuck on culture, it's mm -hmm. easy for them to do. Mm -hmm. okay. well, I think that we have a kind of same situation in Iceland. Can I have a country more for people? You don't discuss it, of course. <laughs> no, I'm not that we have that to write me. Funding. I have the impression that funding in Finland is very much like in Norway. Mm. It is not? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you have much better situation. And um, now we are facing the fact that, uh, for example, our company, we are not getting any more money from the government uh, for next or three years and then the city said that next year we will be safe by uh, 2015 we will face some cuts and mm -hmm. so it's the reality indeed and at the same time 
we are trying to discuss or learn how to discuss that part of it. We plan not to talk about money. Yeah. <laughs> but it's unavoidable. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, we are talking about quality uh, a lot, like uh, we are adults who, who are in a way agreeing about or have a kind of uh, consensus about it. And I was thinking, because I'm also an educator, I'm, I teach in a uh, in dance academy, and I would like to ask you, uh, is there a difference of talking, since you are accepting the word, quality a lot. I was thinking of asking you, uh, what do you think about that discussion in art education? What is quality in art education? Because it's this what we are dealing with. After, for me, I think we are talking about quality after education as professionals. And I was just wondering, what is quality in the art education now? To become as such good thinkers we are now <laughs> about quality. <laughs> Can I do something in the uh, in the art education? What is my tool to introduce quality for my students? Mm -hmm. Can I comment on that? Yes, the, the craftsmanship that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. In school, you learn craftsmanship. And, uh, that doesn't necessarily give you quality. And it's the same as, as, as doing the art piece. You can do the craftsmanship perfectly, but it's a crap. So we are, we are stuck with the same thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, the craftsmanship lies in, in there, but, but the thing is that we, we have the problem to talk about, or difficulties in talking about quality or what value or whatever it is, is because it's untouchable. And, and to be honest, you have to say you don't have it, you have it. And that's a fact, but you can, I can teach them both craftsmanship. But I, I, I won't get the quality out of both. And that's that's a fact, and that's a, that's a difficult thing to explain. It like we were saying, the situation in Iceland now, we have to talk about craftsmanship, mm -hmm. because they don't know what we are doing for eight weeks, mm -hmm. and they don't understand that there's drama. To it. That's the, the silliest job in the world. <laughs> After that, you have the director, and that's good enough. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's the situation, and then is mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah. I would like to comment on that because when I was a student, I had a professor who was remarkable in a way of bringing us students out in the world on festivals and out in the theatre, seeing dance and theatre during the whole education. And he was remarkable not just in this, doing that, but also to establish this room for conversation and dialogue continuously when we learned. And I so thankful and grateful for uh, thankful is not a, grateful for that because it was not the uh, normal part of the educational system. But uh, I think this was uh, maybe the largest part of the education, if you understand. In an, <laughs> bring them into the theater and look together and discuss afterward. Yeah, and as a former student, <laughs> that's what you already do. <laughs> you <laughs> only, yeah, but oh, it was a tricky question. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> no, but uh, that school is like, as far as I know, the school that uh, has the most discussions about art and talk about what we, what you're doing on the floor, mm -hmm. and also discussing performances that you don't see. So I think you're you know, one of the the schools that are on the right tracks, anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> She was just coming in to do a workshop with us or something. She was like uh, holding us for not going to Stockholm to see Rosas or something. Like, oh, you have to go, you have to go. Yeah, like, things was different. And 
You should go and where to spend your money. You see everything. And remember that. Probably because we didn't have Christmas defense, so we could say no, we can't go. But you know, also all my Norwegian pals like she she go and she's this high, you know, like known choreographer. But after that we kinda like oh, somebody needs to kinda kick you to go see everything really and, and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Try to uh, I really that is really important. That is important. And you remember the teachers that have to do that. Mm. Or make it. Yeah. Yes, uh, I was wondering, uh, we have this discussion to go back to captions that I did, um, about quality, because the quantity measurement has almost, almost cooked the quality debate mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, when it comes to counting tickets, audience development, etc., etc. It means, I think, what the question is, will this influence? the educational system to make more sellable uh, performances, less arty performances and more audience friendly, uh, consumer friendly performances. How will this affect aesthetics? This is important. I think it's uh, very important. It might be on a crossroad. Yes. Constantly think in cycles and, and in numbers and, and, and uh, in money terms, um, this might be a crossroad for us. And, and as a drama player, as a producer, I'm talking to lots of young artists in Belgium. Um, and they've learned a lot from the Netherlands. The Netherlands, is, the situation is extremely bad. Um, so they all become cultural entrepreneurs, which is very nice. Um, so they can write nice dossiers right now. But after 10 minutes, you come to the content, you come to the artistic discussion, and there's nothing. And I'm a bit afraid of that. Um, people coming from theatre education in mastery, um, that this is the way they want to work in the future. But, yeah, that's just a, a thought. Is, is it everywhere like that? Is it, is it um, a shared concern? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shared concern even in a well-funded system like ours. Yeah. 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 It's part of, the, <coughs> part of the dynamics that I hope maybe that it's the, you never know what it is what such evaluation can be used for. And that's <laughs> something you have to think before you, you start it. And uh, that was, I think it was why it was also difficult to say yes and no first time. When, when, when we did it or when I did it, it was in the hope of that maybe it can move the discussion a little uh, from, from this quantity thing. Uh, also because I know how bad this discussion is within uh, the institution when, when, when focus is there and not on... Uh, yeah. But so I do think it's also socially important. I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid to say I have to cancel a performance which is called in English later on I'm dead because the schools didn't want to come to that performance and I asked why and the teachers told me um, that's, you, you can't, that's a frontal which is non and uh, not inviting enough, and, and death is certainly not a topic to deal with, uh, with children. But that's the same for lots of other topics as well. Um, and then what you do, there is a, there's a very nice performance in Belgium made by John Solvius, which has been performed twice. Because everybody says, well, um, there's a lot of misery in the world, don't confront these children with child Solvius. And if the result if, is that all these artists Start thinking in the economical way, which I understand, will have completely different art scene and a different society in the end. And that's what it's made. Well, maybe I'm too late. Something more to add? Something to this? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, I think in, uh, Italy has beautiful culture and they have, <laughs> I need to say that, yeah. and my experience with Italy is that they are foremost in fashion, art, fine art, performance, opera, theatre, uh, they have all this classical 
uh, <laughs> fundament within the arts that I really appreciate as, as a contemporary artist. So I just needed to say that because I'm thinking, yes, I'm indeed here too, but my experience is totally different. But that was, of course, the context. And I'm also speaking about the rest of Italy, not only one. So it's a sort of, I would really like to say it's a beautiful country. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not an Italian connoisseur. <laughs> it was just an example of something quite different. Yes. It's a nice bridge. Yes. Oh, well, I just when we're talking about art education, because we're talking about art for children, mm -hmm. and in at least in the Scandinavian countries, we're talking a lot about bringing the art through the educational system and not bringing them as a private audience. We do that as well, but we do very much bringing the art through the educational system, and I think that that obligates us as artists to 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 have the dialogue with the educational systems about the way to use art. How to use it, because we've been, we have a, a, a huge integrity about our products and we need to have that as artists. But at the same time, it's very important for us to start the discussion with the, with the, with the teachers about the use of art, how to use the art. Because we can't just say it's only the art for the art's sake. We know it's, that's very important, but we have to go into that discussion with the educational system as well as how to use the art. I mean, in Denmark we had, and I know you had it in Norway as well, a visit from the English professor Anne Banford. Yeah. She was talking a lot about that. She was talking about uh, 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 education in art and education through art, mm -hmm. and art as education and education as art. And I think we have to take that very seriously mm -hmm. when we're working as artists as well. It's not a question about quantity and a question about changing uh, the the, the topics or the subjects of what we are doing, but it's a, it's a question about us having the guts to go into that discussion with the educational system of how to use it. And in Denmark we have started about talking about uh, not only an audience, but as, uh, also talking about a student audience, meaning that when you are in within the educational system you have actually the chance to talk about how to use art to start that discussion within the, the system. How to use theatre, because we know music is in the schools already, and, and the visual arts are in the schools already, but drama and theatre and dance is not. And we have to push ourselves into the educational systems and start that discussion. Mm -hmm. And it's, of course, it can start a discussion about uh, artistic quality, but we have to dare to go into the discussion with the, with the educators about what is art and how can we use them? And that's the essence of the, the idea of art education. I think. And there's, there's something about that thing about having <coughs> a culture which is broad enough where you can actually have your productions about that look at subjects like child soldiers and those productions which are by their very nature always going to have quite a small audience and to be able to fight for those productions but at the same time, not get. I think sometimes we can we can get scared of that whole thing about the, the quantity thing, um, as if getting a big audience for some reasons a, a sign of selling out your art, um, you know. And 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 to do that thing, but sometimes actually doing pieces which are which you're very very pleased with as an artist in terms of what you make, and if they get a big audience as well, you know. And how many people is that thing about saying? I never want to have a show to go to Broadway. You're selling out my art and making huge amounts of money at the same time. Um, you know, it, it's, there, there's a sense of actually having a, a society or a culture which embraces all those things, but which you, you try and set on your terms. So we're not afraid of that, that thing about, so it's not the tick box thing about saying well, how many mm -hmm. is going through. You're doing these things as much on your terms as you possibly can. Um, I remember the first time I saw The Lion King, um, with a very, very bad hangover in, in, in New York before it went around the world. Nobody could have told me that it wasn't a quality production. It wasn't the kind of thing I'd probably want to go and see all the time. It was very noisy with a bad hangover. But, it was, um, <laughs> but there was a real quality to that, whatever, whatever that, that meant. You, you know, and I think sometimes we can get 
into that discussion of being quite negative about these things um, too quickly. Yeah, and I, I, I agree. I do think there's a link, of course. When you, when you welcome an artist on a Saturday afternoon, because we have performance on a Saturday afternoon, and you welcome them backstage, one of the first questions you get is, how many people are there? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest with each other. It, it is important. It's important for you. It's important for them. It's important for everyone. Because, so there is a link. Can we make a last bridge? Because and I wanted to misuse, but if you, you tackle this already a little bit, um, misuse your uh, growth experience, talking about um, very romantic operas in Italy. And I wanted to ask the author of this thing to do only like romantic operas in uh, Italy. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's what um, uh, magic quality or whatever it might be on a practical level. It's about aesthetics and the difference in aesthetics and how we fill in or try to fill in, in a culture or a nation, um, whatever it might be, that uh, quality thing in different aesthetics. Um, is this something like a typical Icelandic dance? Is this something that, that is? Because that's what we're talking about. We were, uh, I was at the Kadia meeting in June, and then we had to the stereotypes. So yeah. I was told what the typical idea of uh, Icelandic dance is. It's uh, long hair, lots of women screaming. So, so that is. Um, but we have, because it's a very small. Uh, Small play. We've had this um, quite strong technical place for like a dancing dance, if you can use that for the term. Uh, but now, after the, we just got the Arts Academy a few years back, so it's been a, a huge change in our environment. It has a huge effect on how, how what pieces are being made mm -hmm. and actually what pieces are being funded, which is really good mm -hmm. that that kind of stuck with it. We have a, a very reflective group of people coming up that are thinking in a different way. Um, and not just the, um, um, it used to be like people that are very young that started working in the company at 17 or something. It was kind of like we had an old fashioned type of, type of view. You know, I went to Norway to study because I was 18 and I was getting old. That was kind of like the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So now it's very different and it is changing really fast. So at the moment it's um, open and weird and fun. And, a lot of cameras, things are happening in that. Yeah, I have to say. <laughs> How about it? Yes. What do, uh, yeah, what about uh, the stereotypic Norwegian dance? Yeah, I was in stereotypic. I think. I, I just remember Estonia, that was something that was of um, women in long dresses doing okay. dances and lines. <laughs> 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 This was always something special to me. Norwegian women were uh, varied. I think it was a, a big variation yeah. coming also from the connection with the federal funding system that they have possibilities for that diverse. That's what they do in Norway, but there is so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in Norway. That was yeah. more than I used to live in Norway. No, I don't know. But I guess there, there's, there are almost 150 companies to, to point out yeah. One or two or five aesthetic styles. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And now you know something about the typical Norwegian aesthetics and please move it up. I know, I can, uh, how to say, contemporary dance that moved in Norway. We mainly people were influenced by Pina Bausch and, uh, and then Rosas from Belgium. And uh, later, the last 10 15 years, there are several uh, expressions, and also we were influenced by Asia. We had the Buto and Asia part that several workers were influenced by. Um, and then now, my impression is that uh, there are several expressions, but to be cool and trendy is very important. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, maybe not only Norwegian but international. <laughs>
Uh, before, it was not that easy to know the trends, but with uh, globalization and internet, it has become more of the same, sort of everywhere. You have festivals in India, in China, in New York, in Norway, that are quite similar sometimes when it comes to aesthetics, because there is an inter, how to say, inter-aesthetics dimension, as an inter-aesthetical dimension that is the same globally. It's not very Norwegian anymore, and it's not typically. But at the same time, you can go by the looks of the people, and they would say, oh, they are from the Nordic countries, and then you have, you know, like that. So, and also, What? Do you regret the fact that uh, no. the aesthetics seems to be a little more similar on a global scale? Mm, no, uh, but um, sometimes we seem to think that it, it's just the way we are, that it comes from somewhere. And the aesthetics uh, works in a dialectic and still it's not, it's not only from our own country. As a, how to say it's um, uh, what I know from the debates and the theory in Norway, especially, is that the, the, the elder dancers means that the younger dancers don't know the history of dance. So, by elder, we say <laughs> the people before internet. Yeah. And then, <laughs> <laughs> because a large part of the 70s are not existing at the internet. You have large productions all over the world that are not visible for new people. You know? So this is a problem not only here, it's everywhere. And it seems to be the fact that the more presence through internet, the, the more they exist, but it's perhaps not true. So we come from somewhere, everyone. Can I comment? Sure. Rome is a fantastic city. And we are the best singer in the world. Opera education is very poor, but I'm not tone deaf. <laughs> okay, it's six o'clock. The food is ready. No, yes, the food is ready. Okay. I think I can. May I can conclude and thank you for being here. Thanks for the interruption. Yeah. And I hope you are a bit satisfied. Very satisfied. Thank you.